pastor said, God will never hold it against you trying to help somebody. A lot of people see people out and they're on drugs and stuff, and there's a lot of them, and they say, ah, they got their self in that mess, don't help them. But God will never hold it against you or me for trying to help somebody. So I hope that you'll keep that in mind. Psalm 26. Psalm 26 this morning. I want to preach a little short message here today that I think would be a help to you. And I want to preach, this is my subject, Ready for Summer 2018. Ready for Summer 2018. Look in Psalm 26 and verse 1. This would be our prayer for the summer. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I hope you can say that. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. I hope you mean that. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart, for thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissimilars. That, that word dissimilar is our word we'd say hypocrisy or fakes, put on, uh, uh, a phony. Verse 5, I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. Watch where you go, who you hang around. I will wash mine hands in innocency, so will I come past thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. All these verses have sermons in them. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house. Where would that be today? Church. And the place where thine honor dwelleth. Look at that. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and the right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in mine integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place. In the congregation will I bless the Lord. Y'all listen? I want to preach on facing and being how to live the summer of 2018. Three little quick truths I'll give you this morning and then we'll go. You know, we are living in some dark, difficult, perilous, prophetic, uh, weird, scary times. But perilous times are times of opportunity. Never before has the world been so dark and because of that, never before has the church been allowed the opportunity to shine so bright. The darker it is outside, the makes the light shine brighter. If you turned all these lights in here this morning and only left one of them on, it would look very much brighter than it does in here with all the lights on. The world is extremely dark this morning, wouldn't you say? There's things going on in this world today that I honestly didn't think we would ever see in our lifetime. And so, as we fix, get ready for this summer, it's not going to be better, it's going to be worse. You can count on it. So I want to give you three little things, and I want you to make this three little prayers. Simple little words, and they are this. Number one, fix me up. Fix me up. I wrote this down the other day, and I thought, sometimes you just need to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I just need to get fixed up. I need to get line. You know, that's what we do when it's spring. The Bible said in Psalm 112 and verse 7 that a man that's right with God said his heart is fixed, is fixed. When a bus tears up, we want to get it fixed. When, a, when your car tears up, you have to get it fixed. When things go wrong, a, a pipe busts underneath the house, you have to get it fixed. Now, that's what we need to do with our heart and, and mind and beginning of this summer, get it fixed. It's easy to get all cluttered up. It's easy. Uh, and I guess this first point would be get rid of the clutter that gets in your mind and it cobwebs uh, in your heart and, uh, uh, and clear out the clutter in your head. It's easy to get junk cluttered up in your mind. Uh, the other day we was... Uh, 
I, I put off all my yard work till after the youth rally. I do it every year. And then my grass is that high and we got junk all over the place. And I told him, I said, uh, I told Ethan, I said, come on, we're going to do some work out in the yard. And uh, he got the weed eater and started working and go, going down. And I got the rake and started getting leaves. And we had this uh, a dog fence around out in the backyard and it had leaves piled that much. And then I had a big old pile of brush and I had an old lawn chair made out of that plastic that was broke. And I had just a pile of stuff there. I said, I think I'm going to go ahead and burn that, burn that mess while I got a chance right now. And, uh, and so we, we raked them leaves. We raked them leaves. The grass couldn't even grow because there's so many leaves around about that much. Leaves. You know how they lay there all winter long and, and they're like this. We've got a million trees around the house and they're all piled up right there. And you know what we done? We took them rakes and we cleaned out that clutter, just junk. I mean, old, pe- pe- old bottles and just junk somebody'd throw down, and I threw it all on there, and I set it on fire, and, buddy, we got rid of every bit of that stuff. We cleaned out the clutter. Now, just why do you think God lets something like that happen? Everything you can see is a picture of something you can't see. Your life is just like that. Your heart is like that. Your mind is like that. You're out there in the world, you get cluttered up. You know what I'm talking about? You're the world's philosophy, the world's music, the world's attitude, the world's morals. And if you're not careful after staying out there all the week long and everything, your head and your heart gets cluttered, brother. I mean, to say the least. Uh, the movies that the world produces, the music the world produces, everything about it that comes out of Hollywood. I mean, the world, the world, the world, the world is not naturally right. And ladies and gentlemen, sometimes you just, you just it's like this guitar. Do you know this guitar right here? It does not automatically stay in tune. That sounded pretty good there. When David hit it, it's in tune. Somebody had to tune this thing. It's not automatically in tune. As a matter of fact, if you leave that thing laying there, it'll get out of tune. Somebody will come by and hit one of them keys, you know, just carrying it in and out, taking it home, bringing it back. That thing gets out of tune. Every string that's with that piano, even though it's got big, thick string, gets out of tune. You have to call somebody every now and then, say, come and tune our piano. Now, why would we think our heart is any different? Why would we think you just naturally, I know people that don't, don't read the Bible, don't go to church, never go to the altar and pray, never think, and they say, yeah, I'm right with the Lord. No, man, you're, here's the way you sound, Bring, like that. I mean, you are out of tune. Uh, here's, here's the way your heart sounds to God right here. I'm gonna show you how your heart sounds to God. That's the way it sounds. You, and, and you come to the altar and get it right, and you go, Amazing grace, how sweet to sound like that. You get on tune. And the Bible said that we're to get our heart fixed. Get it fixed. Hey, there's some of you sitting here this morning, used to live for the Lord, used to be on fire for the Lord, used to wouldn't go certain places, used to wouldn't do certain things, and now you find yourself going there, doing that, saying those words, doing that. I'm telling you, you need to pray this prayer. Fix me up, Lord. Fix me up. Get me all fixed up this morning. The way to do that is clean. You know how to get your guitar in tune? Like that. You know how to get the piano in tune? Put that ranch on them and fix that thing. You know how to get your clothes clean? Throw them in the washing machine. You know how to get your heart clean? Bathe it in God's word and get clean through the word of the living God. That's right. Get your heart clean. Number two. Let me tell you the second one this morning. What's the first one? Fix me up. Number two, fill me up. Fill me up. This little outline I, the Lord gave me a couple of days ago. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18 said, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. It is God's will for every Christian to be filled with the Spirit. I just taught on it a couple of Wednesday nights ago about being filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what the Holy Spirit will do? It'll help you act right. It will help you talk right. It'll help you live right. What, go to the right places. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to, we need to you know what the Holy Spirit will do? It'll make you get up and fight another round. I believe, uh, I, believe uh, I, I heard about a, a guy, it was a, a boxer. And this boxer, I'm, I'm not a 
I'm not a, uh, a real boxing fan, but I, honestly, I admire their guts to get in there and fight like that. And this guy got in the boxing round, and he's a boxer like this, you know, and the guy hit him, bam, and knocked him down. And he got back up, and the second round come, and he got up there, and the guy, bam, hit him and knocked him down again. And you know what that old boy did? That old boy come back in the third round, and he said, you might have knocked me down the first round. You might have knocked me down the second round. But, buddy, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to give it everything I've got. And he fought that guy, and he got a little edge on him. Round number three, number four, number five, number six. Now, I don't know how many they wound up going, but they had three judges. And when the match was over, all three judges agreed that that guy won that fight. He got completely knocked down two separate times and come back and won that fight. Like a football player who comes here, like them quarterbacks, when they, when they snap that ball like that and that quarterback goes back like that, sometimes you got two big guys about as big as refrigerators from both sides and you're Bam, I mean to tell you they ain't playing neither. I mean, they'll knock you from here to that wall over there. Now, I mean, they'll rattle your head. Sometimes you can't even see straight. But you know what them quarterbacks do? They got, they got a lot more sense than a lot of church members I know. They say, you might have knocked me down. You might have bloodied my nose and my mouth. But I'm getting back up and I'm fighting and I'm not giving up. And they'll come back next time and might throw a touchdown. Now, I'm going to tell you this morning, kids. Let me tell you something, teenagers. Let me tell you something, bus workers. Let me tell you something, Sunday school teachers. Let me tell you something. The devil may knock you down. He, he may drag you through the mud. He may, he may wipe the floor with you. He may win the victory over you. But there should be something inside of you that says, get back up and fight and win this race. I'm telling you, money can't buy that. The Holy Spirit's got to put that in you. I hope you've got that in you. Listen, if you're a quitter, if you are a quitter, you'll never amount to anything. What does, the, what does the world say? Quitters never win. And winners, what? Never quit. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't, our coach taught us in school, if we, was, if we was in basketball, if we was behind 20 points and there's one minute to go, we better not walk down that floor. We better run and fight it out to the bitter end. Lord in mercy, I, I, I'm not, I can't do that now. I try, uh, but I can't. But we better give it 100% every time, the whole time. And I'm gonna tell you something this morning. Our church, we need some people who will give it 100%. We don't need, we, listen, we got plenty of people that just mooches their way through and says, don't ask me to do nothing. I'll get out of everything I do. We need some people to say, hey, we got a job to do. We've got a bus to run. We've got kids to read. Let's get it done. Let's fight the good fight of faith. People don't want to fight no more. People don't want to fight no good fight of faith. They just want to float through and have no kind. Of, uh, it's funny. You catch it no matter what, what you do. If, if the church don't do good, they say, well, you ain't much. And if it does real good, you get, you get criticized no matter what you do. I wouldn't go to a church so sorry that the devil didn't fight it. I went to a restaurant in town here, I won't say which one the other day, and uh, I'd been out all day, and you know, I hadn't had a good meal to, except I went to uh, the, the, a steakhouse over yonder last Sunday in several days, and I would just eat junk during the youth rally, and uh, I went in this restaurant, and this guy was wanting to talk to me real bad, and uh, I said, man, I ain't got time all day, but I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll meet you at this restaurant up the road here, and I will, uh, we'll talk then, that way I won't be wasting time, I let him talk for an hour. And uh, so we sat down there, and I walked in. And he says, hey, there he is. And I said, hey, how y'all doing? And the manager and a waitress, and the manager looked at me and said, yeah, boy, we had a terrible weekend last weekend. I said, really? Why is that? He said, I told him. He said, where's everybody at? He said, Danny Castle's got them all over at the fairground. <laughs> I said, whoa, whoa, now you're blaming me because y'all didn't do good last weekend? If you'd lower your prices a little bit, somebody might come. Uh, but uh, I didn't say that. But I thought, hey, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean nothing bad by it. And uh, he's, I said, I didn't tell them people not. I, I, I said, we did have hamburgers and hot dogs. I, you know, I said that to say this. I pray every day, Lord, lead me. And, Lord, and, and this verse has been on my mind like crazy lately. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And I'm telling you, people, 
how good God's been to me lately. It feels like, honest to goodness, I might be wrong sometimes, but ever since the, the uh, week before the youth rally, it feels like, man, he's leading me. He's leading me, and I can tell it. One thing right after another. I finally went and sat down. The waitress comes, she said. She said, there's a, another waitress here who's having a hard time. She's got several kids and ain't got no money and ain't got no help. Need a handicap ramp. And uh, so she came over to the table and almost started crying. And we gave her some money and to, to be a blessing to her. And I got to thinking when I left there, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And I believe this. I believe if you will surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and that you'll say, God, whatever. You can't say now, okay, I'll do this, but you better not ask me to do that. You better not. You, total surrender, total surrender. Lord, I surrender all. Jesus went all the way for us, right? Yeah. He paid the price on that cross, right? Yeah. He didn't hold back. He didn't go 80% all the way. And if you'll come to the Lord and say, Lord, I surrender everything I am, everything I have, it's yours. God just take me to you and then fight like I was talking about a minute ago. The Holy Spirit will lead you. He'll lead you. I'm telling you, he'll lead you to people to talk to. I've, had, I've seen it happen over and over and over. We was on bus route yesterday. Uh, uh, Ethan was with me and, and Brother Tom over there was with me and, and uh, um, the, a mailman or a pizza person or somebody just pulled, in, just pulled in. Now you may think that's all accident, but we was walking down there like this and the mailman pulled in and jumped out and I said, here, I went over here, give him a track. How are you, sir? See, I will never see that man again, probably in this world. But God in heaven, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And I'm, I'm not a good man, but if I yield myself to the Lord, he is able, he is willing, and he will lead you to the right way. Can I ask you a question? What better life can you live than being led by his spirit? You can't beat that. You can't beat that because he knows the future. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. You can't beat it. If you say, I don't want to do that, I'm smart enough to figure out my own life. I'll go here, I'll do this, I'll work here, I'll go there, I'll live here, I'll do this. Then you, you, what you're saying is I'm smarter than God. But if you'll real, yield yourself to him and say, Lord, thy will be done. You lead me. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Be filled with the Spirit. Ask God to fill you with the Spirit. Number three, and I'm done. I said, number one, Lord, fix me up. Number two, Lord, fill me up. Number three, Lord, fire me up. The Bible said here in Jeremiah chapter five and verse 14, he told Jeremiah, he said, I will make my words fire and this people would, and it shall devour them. He said, my word is like a fire, like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. In Acts chapter two, when the Holy Spirit came there on those Jewish disciples, uh, the Bible said, cloven tongues of fire set on each one of them. There is a sense in which the word of God is like a fire. And when we say, when we say I'm on fire for the Lord, that's what we mean. We don't mean like you took a match, but everything you can see is a picture of something you can't see. When I built that fire out in the yard the other day and I set that big pile of brush on fire, that's what I'm trying to do to y'all today. Throw a match on it, you know. Throw, get some fire burning. Thank God for what he did at the youth rally. Thank God for answering our prayers. Thank the Lord he's still on the throne. But I'm here to say this morning, we need to pray for this summer. Lord, fire me up. Fire me up, Lord, fire me up. Life's too short to stay backslid. Life's too short. Some of you already, oh, it's summertime and people are starting to dress worse and the music's playing and I'm going to the beach and I'm going. You already planning out your backsliding for this summer. Already. And I'm not saying you can't go on vacation and stay right with God. You can, but it ain't easy. If you don't put God first and go to church and stay in the book, you won't, you won't stay right with God. Right. Here, there, Florida, or Alaska, you won't stay right with God. Life is too short to stay back. You're like a car that won't start. You're like a, I, I, got, my, I got two weed eaters, and nothing's more aggravating than to have two weed eaters, and neither one of them will run. 
And I can't get Jim to fix mine no more because the guy bothers him. But them stupid things, uh, one of them, it'll go, rawr, 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 rawr. I honestly spend more energy cranking them things than I do cutting the weeds. I believe it'd be better off to get a sling blade like Daddy used to use and just sling them like that. And, and they say drain them in the winter. I drained them. Still won't run. Uh, and and th then they go, Rawr! take it back over here. Here it goes. Oh, it's going this time. Rawr! Uh, anybody ever have it? The best thing to do is buy a cheap weeder and just buy a new, new one every summer, I reckon. Uh, and quit fooling with them. But, uh, go to Walmart, rule king, get you a new one every year. And they'll last one summer. Uh, but anyway, you know what? That reminds me of a lot of church members I know. You come in here this morning, I preach. Before you get home, you done died out. You know what you need to do? You need a spark plug, man. You know, I mean, somehow or another, you need some kind of fire. How can you backslide every week? I have people come in sometimes. Oh, Brother Danny, I barely made it. I hope you got something that'll get me fired up today. Listen, people, I can, I can hook cables up to you and jump you off this morning, but you're going to have to get something to keep yourself fired up a little bit. 2018's going to be a bad summer. It's going to be a bad summer. Amen? Set you some goals. Bus workers, set some goals on that bus route. If the devil says, well, it's about time you give it up. You say, why do you say the devil says that? Because God don't say that. Yeah, that's right. If the devil says, about time you give it up. So you know what I'll do? This morning, honest to goodness, it was awful. We had bus uh, out of fuel, tore up, can't find this, can't find that. Three drivers out of five out of town. Three out of five. And, and I'm, not, I'm not mad because they, you know, it's okay to go out of town once in a while. But just one mess right after another, after another, after another, after another. And it, it was awful this morning. And the devil said, why do you, you just quit worrying about this? And you know what my response is? I think I'll take up an offer and start a new bus route next week. He'll leave you alone if that's your attitude, amen? You can't let the devil jump on you and say, well, just living right is so hard. You just quit going to church on Sunday night and quit. just give it all up. You say, well, I think I'm gonna double my Bible reading this week and I'm gonna put double offering in next week. What do you think about it? He'll leave you alone. The Bible said resist the devil. You know what you need? You need some fight in you. Amen, amen. Hey, don't let the least little old thing knock you out. Don't let a big thing knock you out. Don't let a divorce knock you out. Don't let a disease knock you out. Don't let a desertion knock you out. Don't let finances knock you out. You hang in there and serve God and stay right with God this summer. Listen, I'm gonna tell you a story. I'm through. There was an Orthodox Jew born in Russia moved to America many years ago. He spent eight years studying the Talmud and planning to be a rabbi. That's a, that's a big position as an Orthodox Jew. Actually taught in the Chicago Hebrew Institute there in Chicago. And the more he studied his Old Testament, somebody had been praying for him or something, he started seeing things in the Old Testament. And that old boy, if, if you ever witness to a Jew, you can't use the New Testament because they don't believe it or accept it. But you can show enough Jesus in the Old Testament to win anybody in the world to Jesus Christ. He's all the way through it. Take him to Isaiah 53 and show him that crucifixion, buddy, just as plain as day. And that old boy got under conviction. And at two o'clock in the morning, he kept seeing scriptures that pointed the Messiah. That one, man, I believe these people are right. He was the Messiah. And at two o'clock in the morning, got down on the floor and surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about a rabbi, a Jewish rabbi to be. Brilliant man. And he got saved and he got hooked up with a preacher and started going to church and the Lord started blessing him. And he, he had raised and paid for his two younger sisters to come to America and live from Russia. And he had paid for them and they found out that he had got saved. Now people, 
You think some of your kin folks treat you bad because you miss a, miss a gathering once in a while to come to church? If you are an Orthodox Jew, you are completely abandoned and cut off from the family if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ. He got a letter from his sisters. I'm not going to read it all to you, but it was almost word for word this. Louise, your sister and I are greatly distressed over the insane thing that has happened to you. What in the world is wrong with you? Now, he had been like a father to these girls. He supported them and and took care of them. She said this, you are no longer our brother. We count you as dead. The rabbi has already conducted your funeral. We went through all of our apartment and anything that had your name on it, your face on it, or a gift from you has been destroyed. When this letter is finished, I will stomp the pen I wrote it with and throw it in the garbage. You are a traitor Jew. You you can have your bastard Christ. We never want to speak to you again. That's the letter he got from his family. And that old boy brought that and showed it to his preacher and he said, my family, my sisters, that's my sisters. They'll never speak to me again. But he said this, I cannot give up my Savior. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm telling you something, people. The Lord never said it would always be easy. He never said you'd have a rose. Why do you think the Bible calls us soldiers? You know what soldiers do? They fight. We are in a fight. We're in a fight for our kids. We're in a fight for our churches. We're in a fight for our country. We're in a fight for our faith. And I want us to pray these simple little prayers. Lord, fix me up. Lord, fill me up. Lord, fire me up. I want you to stand with your heads bowed, please. Miss Desi's coming. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed this morning. I can tell you right now, we're headed for a rough summer. They are, as I speak right now, trying to pass laws to ban us from preaching certain parts of the Bible. And that's where it's coming. I may not live to see it, but my grandkids will. They will. It'll be banned. It'll be outlawed. Make you stand here this morning. We're not going to sing. We're just going to bow our head for a few seconds and pray. Why don't you just slip out of your seat and come up here this morning and say, Lord, fix my heart up. Get the clutter out of it. Burn the junk out of my heart. Come on. Come on right now. Let's get in this altar and let's meet here this morning. Let's pray. Lord, clean me up. Lord, clean me up. Amen. 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 Clean the clutter out of my head. You got junk in your heart? Worldly music, worldly movies, dirty stuff, wicked stuff, lust, pride, jealousy. Say, Lord, clean the junk out of my heart. Amen. Amen. Others, others, many are coming. Many are coming here this morning. Others may need to come. Come on right now. Lord, fix me up. Lord, fill me up. Maybe you're right with God this morning. You say, Lord, fill me up. And then maybe you're here this morning just say, Lord, fire me up. Fire me up. Help me to stand. It ain't no time to back out, back down, or back up. It's time to put the pedal to the metal, brother. Full steam ahead. Let's go. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Amen. Anybody else? Anyone else need to come? We're going to pray. Lord, fix me up, fill me up, fire me up. He'll do it. Father, I pray right now. I ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would fill us, that you would fire us, that you would fix us the way we need to be this morning. Lord, my heart is surrendered to you. Oh, God, I want to be willing to do whatever you want me to do, to go wherever you want me to go, to say whatever you want me to say. Lord, if I'm not willing, make me willing. Lord, help me to be willing. Lord God, help me not to resist your plan, your will for my life. I pray, Holy Spirit, Lord, I pray that you bless all your children around the world. Bless every preacher standing for what's right everywhere. 
Bless all these souls here this morning. All these little kids here this morning. Bless them, Lord. Please, I pray. Do with us, for us, what ought to be done. We'll thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm still praying this morning. So I'm still praying. She's playing softly. Let God speak to your heart.